It's that time. The world has been waiting. The emails have been flooding in. Let's talk about Azalea. Ace in the hole. Yeah. So what makes her so unique and what are her good and bad matchups? Um, so what makes her unique is that most of her attack card, attack action cards do require to use a bow. Oh, yeah. yeah you just can't play them out willy-nilly, right? Mm -hmm. so, um, so her good matchups, I feel like cards like Red and Ledger, Rem uh, Remorseless, and Sleep Dark mm -hmm. are very good against decks that like to do a lot, do a lot of stuff. So well, Chain, mm -hmm. Chain is a good example. If you get one of those cards to hit a, ch a Chain player, it usually stops the turn. Yeah. And uh, the more blood dead they've got in the pool, the better, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, like, I feel like Zeta is really good against aggro decks too. Mm. Like those cards just shut their turn off. Yeah. And then yeah, the opponent is either forced to defend or just take it and then just do something, right? Yeah, pretty underwhelming if you get hit by a sleep dart and you're trying to be an aggressive katsu or an aggressive chain or something. Well, yeah, yeah. It messes everything up. Yeah, sleep dart's very, very, very powerful. Mm. And then the bad matchups is like m more, more control decks, mm. especially like um, Bravo. Like it has a hard, uh, she has a hard time versus Bravo because Bravo not only does it defend well, but then she Bravo has cards that like crush cr crush your the crush your crush your turns, mm. such as Spinal Crush, Crippling Crush. Like when you play one of those cards against a as a deck, it's like very hard. Yeah, to the hard, very hard to defend because they, they usually have, they usually have dominate. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, most of these arrows are coming in, and like... then those two cards usually end your turn mm. because of spinal crush. You can't really attack again after you use your bow, mm. and uh, crippling crush because you're what well, sky two cards, and yeah. you actually need two cards to play, play, play out. So yeah, that, that's those are the bad matchups. Mm. What are your thoughts on some different ways to build Azalea, or even some of the different deck lists that you've seen in the classic constructed metagame? Mm -hmm. So I've definitely seen Azalea decks use new card from Monarch, mm. Memorial Grounds. Yeah, insane, right? To, to recycle red ledges and stuff like that after mm. they use them, right? Whereas my devil station list, I was more... I, knew, I only knew there was only two control decks. Yeah, yeah. Bravo. And Yours. And uh, mine. Mm. Right, so that that which is why I chose to play a more aggro mid range build mm -hmm. just to try get in there as well as I personally I do not enjoy cards that do not defend mm -hmm. because and Memorial Ground does that yeah. but, like if you draw Memorial Ground and you have like nothing to follow up with it it just becomes a dead card in this area yeah, so that's why yeah. but I do I do like I I have seen that version I do I do. Quite like that version, but it's just like that version is not the place out for me mm. because of how much setup it needs. So, which is why I chose my um, mid like go wide, go tall instead of dig. Yeah, bit of everything in that one. It's yeah, good. but I have seen a is that a dig that has topped eight to a road to nationals overseas. So. And it ran wire around, so maybe yeah. maybe I'm wrong. But, maybe they know something but, you don't. Yeah, but yeah, I really his list was very cool. Mm -hmm. It did run a lot. It was similar to mine, but with Memorial Grounds. Yeah. So maybe more Memorial Grounds is the card for Azalea. That's cool. Yeah. How has Azalea evolved, maybe strategy wise, or maybe specific cards since the release of Monarch? Yeah. Cool. So Azalea had. I had this new card from what I called Memorial Grounds, mm -hmm. where it's an instant and then you can put one card from your graveyard to the top of the deck. So you know, so that works well with Zaylee because you know, you try, you put the top card from your deck to your arsenal and then it gets dominate. Mm -hmm. So that's been the strategy for most players with putting red and ledge, used red and ledges or used remorseless, or even if you defend with them, they go to the graveyard, right? So yeah. you can set up, set that up. So that's been pretty cool to like, have a like red and ledger loop. Yeah, sort of. yeah, very nice. So that's one of the brand new options, as well as this cards like Seek Horizon and stuff like that, which help you set up more with Azalea. 
Because there's like a lot of opting going on in these Azalea decks. So of course, Sigma Rising, you put a card on top, yeah. it kind of helps you out a bit. I think it's the most, like, I think the most important thing was to know what's on top of your deck. So you always hit with your Azalea. Yeah. yeah. Some pretty exciting evolutions of Azalea, whether it be the cards or the whole strategy altogether. So yeah. hopefully, um, some more exciting things on the horizon for Ranger. All right, your boy, Jacob Pearson. Your boy is here. Let's talk about Brava, and um, he's been making a massive comeback recently. Heaps of, like, not only just, oh yeah, a couple top eights, but it's there's been a few tournaments at the Road to Nationals around the world where we're seeing three of the top four as Bravos and a whole lot of victories. Why? Well, as you all should hopefully know, Bravo is my boy. Yeah. Um, he's, he's been my, my absolute number one favorite hero um, since I first started playing. Uh, he was the actually the second deck I started playing. I, I, was, I was a Katsu, Katsu boy before I picked up the old hammer and started whacking away at people's life totals. But um, yeah, he's, he's, he's definitely been my favorite for a long time. Uh, it's, it's a very interesting deck um, because it's not so much play from turn to turn, mm. but how you play the, the game as a whole. So it's all about setting up what's in your deck, being very careful with your resource management, caring about what reds you have left in your deck, what ratios of blues you have left in your deck, how much damage you're able to force through at the end of the game. There are a lot of very interesting strategies you can implement for specific matchups that only take one or two cards to implement. Yeah. Um, like I think I was talking about on a previous question with like Blessing of Deliverance and Remembrance mm. and kind of looping that in order to get through some of these tough control matchups um, for like the, the super dedicated control decks. Bravo is a control deck, but it can also play like a very uh, beefy mid-range deck where it's slamming down these big crush attacks and making people throw their hands in front of it and using that to kind of generate the tempo. Mm. The flip side of that is it's not a very consistent thing. So when you try and play it as that mid-range strategy with those pummels, with those big crush attacks, going from turn to turn, you're often going to run out of steam and your opponent's going to be able to regain control of the game and finish you off. That's why I feel like the more optimal uh, sort of control strategies for Bravo do kind of rely on that, that setting up and that resource management that I was talking about. Um, some interesting tech as well is um, with your show times, being you have to be very careful um, with shuffling your deck and remembrance as well, because obviously they they ruin your finish deck. They, 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 they change the whole composition of your deck, and it's a, there's, there's a lot of real nuance to playing Bravo that I don't think a lot of newer players don't quite pick up on. Mm -hmm. um, and I think a lot of people are starting to to really grasp that and be able to use that to kind of push the, the Bravo in a way innovation forwards mm -hmm. um, into, into this new meta game. And uh, we really see it as well with like the chain matchups. Um, people getting the timing on there, their spinal crush is perfect. Yeah. Um, they throw them through with Dominate when, when the chain's got six or seven cards, but they're sitting up there a big rip by and turn, and then, oh, yeah. suddenly you don't have go again. You're taking 10 to your blood debt, and I'm going to Dominate attack through, and that's going to be the end of uh, Mr. Chain. And uh, a lot of these games we see being uh, ended up in this, this kind of fashion. Mm. Um, and because of the popularity of Chain, that uh, really kind of edges Bravo up. Also, we were talking about before with Dash, Dash are a massive dead. Like, mm -hmm. it was completely out of the metagame at the start of Honor, which really allowed Bravo to, to take one step forwards, you know, hold his hammer high, yeah. um, because he doesn't have to deal with those really super uh, tight control lists, where all they're really looking to do is preserve life total, they don't care about your crush effects, they're just going to assemble a bunch of items in play, and they're just going to chip you all the way down from there. It's pretty cool. Like it, it seems, of course, Bravo has received a couple of new toys since mm -hmm. Monarch, but it sounds like why is Bravo putting up all these big results? Well, it's, it's the things moving around it, mm -hmm. and you touched on the understanding that the players are sort of having much more of. Yeah, it's kind of cool that it, it doesn't always have to be the deck gets better, but things around it move. Yeah, absolutely. It's cool. It's nice. Yeah, like, I mean, we're going to talk about how it sort of evolved from Monarch. Mm. Uh, probably the, the the most interesting tools that I received was our muscle and Browsy Ancients, mm. because they allow a much more, like, m more traditional mid range deck from Bravo, where it's kind of sacrificing some of its block threes, it's sacrificing some of its raw consistency for those really big spike turns. Mm. Well, yeah, especially when you have things like Showtime or Stamp Authority, you end up with five or six cards, you're able to go like 
rouse the ancients and swim out muscle and so even sometimes another crush attack yeah. especially if you're using like a mage master boots time combo with that as well you can sometimes end up with like seven card turns yeah um, being bravo which is yeah. insane right so you can play this much more mid-range combo style bravo deck not really my my shtick mm. as it were but it's definitely a cool option that was introduced with monarch yeah which didn't have before that's a really sick evolution something so simple or almost um i don't know it doesn't really jump out of you immediately and something like out muscle well not to me anyway <laughs> but those small things that you talk about the nuances of bravo and it really everything adds up mm -hmm. absolutely so we've, we've talked a lot about different builds of all of the heroes out mm -hmm. there from our devastation event but with bravo i remember on your player profile with such a fantastic slow motion picture <laughs> um sledge was your favorite card yeah can you tell us about some different weapon builds out there? We haven't seen the Sledge too much, but thoughts on any kind of off-the-wall type of Bravo decks <laughs> that could be there? Yeah, sure. Um, a lot of my love of Sledge Vambleheim um, comes from like how powerful the card is, or even, even how good the card is, but how clean that card looks yeah. on a piece of cardboard. We're talking four resource symbols, no effect, just says the one word attack yeah. that six power just yeah, beautiful it's pretty clean the peace star resistance of the weapon world if you will and that artwork is just mm, yeah. pristine um so if you ever see me and want me to, to sign you your sleeve your times uh, feel 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 free it's, it is it has really got a, a nice nice place in, in my little heart oh, wow. um but if we're talking about actual builds that can utilize the card the card is definitely playable um it's very good in the kano matchup mm. the reason for that is because a you don't want to give them something to respond to at the start of your turn um being your seismic surge token that you'd make with tectonic plating because generally what you're doing is you're going like i'm going to pitch a three cost card make a make a token pitch a three cost card attack with your anathos right and get the, the six power mm. but what that does is you're using the same four resources to attack and it doesn't always have six power right mm. so we talk about things like blessing um home of Fienzhou, all these other cards in your deck that don't necessarily have three power and it gives you the option of pitching these still having six power and not sacrificing any additional uh, resource generation uh, which is a, a very very important thing also allows you to just just float some extra resources does does the same thing it is, it is generally much more consistent uh, when you were with that the anathos attack the sacrifice the downside of that is generally you not have to pitch one card to attack with anathos that never realistically happens in the kano matchup anyway mm. Um, so it never really becomes an issue because generally if you only have one card in your hand you're wanting to hold that so you're not going to get burned out it's a very slow sort of grindy matchup and in, in classic constructed for sure cool awesome